Yes, Debra is in the category of policy and advocacy, and it's quite true. This is the second second award for, for Debra's work. And this is the program of dementia, the Medi-Cal Connect project. So I'm gonna give it, turn it over to Debra now. So let me say, it's nice to see so many friends here today. And I just really need to thank the Rosalind and Arthur Gilbert Foundation for drawing attention to the important work of myself and the, my co-awardees and to the Family Caregiver Alliance for uh, helping to select us, it's terrific. Our project came into existence because, as you in the room well know, people with dementia have a very hard time getting good health care. Um, half of them get a diagnosis and half of those get it in their charts. Families who are the backbone of our home and community-based long-term services system don't get identified, don't get supported. And you know, I, I've been around long enough to, um, well, we say the financial burden before I move on of the care is just ridiculously high with costing Medicare three times more for people with dementia than for other conditions, costing Medicaid 19 times more than care for other Medicare recipients. So this is an expensive disease that's getting poor outcomes. And um, I recall when an ex-president um, of the United States was having a hard time getting good quality care. So how much worse is it when you are a poor, older person who is sick and has very few resources? And the Dementia Calmedi Connect project was created um, to build on to the National Financial and Administrative Alignment Project. It's nicely called the Duals Demonstration. So it's people who are on Medicare and people who are on Medi-Cal, which in our case means that they're poor, they're old, they're vulnerable, they have multiple illnesses. And um, we thought, hey, if they're taking Medicare, medical care, and they're taking Medicaid, home and community-based care, and they're merging it together, maybe this is a real opportunity to do some good. And so our project targets dual eligibles. There's an estimate, you know, I guess the estimate from the Alzheimer's Association is that 11% of people aged 65 and older have Alzheimer's. In the duals population, it's about 23% and older. So it's a really high-risk population. And um, we want to accomplish the triple aim along with our health care plan partners. We wanted to improve care and improve care processes and maybe save some money. So, and if we change to the next um, slide, we are, um, Dementia CalMedi Connect is working with um, 10 health plans and we are doing advocacy at the federal, the state, and the health plan level. We're doing training of care managers who we think are the linchpin people and providing better coordinated and better quality care. We're doing technical assistance to champions at health plans and to champions at the state and the federal level. We're um, seeking, we had an early win, which was we managed in California to get dementia care specialists put into our three-way contracts. So that was, um, got us going and gave us some um, policy leverage. Um, next. Well, no, before we switch, let me point out that every tool we've developed and our training programs appear on the ALZ GLA website. Um, someone said, steal this book, steal this program. We hope you will steal all of our materials and we'll even mostly allow people to put their own logos on it if they're using it locally. And switch one more. Um, these are the 10 health plans that we are working with. Um, in um, multiple parts of California. And what we're asking them to do is better identification of people with dementia, better identification of family caregivers, including assessing their needs, supporting them, giving them caregiver education, engaging them in care planning, and then better partnerships with community-based Alzheimer's organizations. Our preliminary results are um, positive. We have some really good promising practices here. I'm not going to go into them, um, but there will be an article in Generations in the, in the fall and another article in GSA's Public Policy and Aging Report um, next year showing some of the results. Can we switch to another slide? Um, just an example of how the project works. Um, let's just say a gentleman with we'll make up his name is Eduardo. Eduardo is caring for his, his father who is and agitated, 
and Eduardo has no resources caring for his father. Um, he was identified um, through a care manager at one of the health plans and sent to Alzheimer's Greater Los Angeles where, and this is not something that would have happened without the project because we're putting in place systems for referral, where he received counseling, disease education. He had access to the Savvy Caregiver, evidence-based caregiver education program, which taught him something about how to manage his dad's care. He got a small respite grant and it picked him up and left him less depressed. And as a result, when our little bit of respite dollars ran out, here was a man who was able to um, talk to his family better, because of savvy caregiver, and ask them to pitch in and continue to provide the family with respite, which is just terrific. It's a, it's a good outcome. So switching, I just want to, well, the, the pictures don't necessarily match anything I'm saying, I'm sorry. But I want to say thank you to the Administration on Community Living, we have Erin here and other partners, um, for supporting the state of California as they put this work in place throughout our state. I want to say thank you to the John A. Hartford Foundation and my colleagues there, Nancy Wilson, Katie Maslow, and um, I'm losing my last person. Um, for, any, um, for, for supporting this project and making it bigger than it was. I want to say thank you to the Dementia Care Network for allowing the advocacy to happen with CMS and with other organizations across the country. And um, thank you to the AAR AARP Public Policy Institute for making this a promising practice because every little bit makes you able to spread it further. And our goal is that Promising practices from this project are going to really <coughs> take off and already in two health plans they've adopted a validated cognitive screen and a validated caregiver stress scale which are going to go national, which is fantastic. And I want to say thank you to my team members last of all. Um, Brooke Hollister is here. We have some colleagues here from Northern California Alzheimer's Association. Some colleagues, I think, from Justice and Aging, which pointed out that we were in the three-way contracts. They said, Deb, Deb, look at page 43, dementia. You know, which is just terrific. And um, again, thank you to ACL. Thank you to the California Department of Aging. Laura Connolly couldn't be here. And Jennifer Schlesinger and Barbara McLendon also. Thanks so much. Yeah.